Uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, uh, I'll just uh, say my name again. So uh, I'm uh, Patrick Reibschläger, and uh, my colleague is uh, Raymond Daxelt, and we've done this work, uh, Design AR Immersive 3D Modeling, Combining Augmented Reality with Interactive Displays, and this was done at the Interactive Media Lab Dresden at the Technische Universität Dresden in Germany. Um, so just to give you a brief overview, uh, we developed a modeling application to create simple 3D objects uh, by combining an interactive design workstation with head-coupled augmented reality, um, which the user interacts uh, by using touch and pen. And furthermore, we also investigated how the AR space um, at the borders of the display can be used to offload menus and for additional views. And at the end, I will also um, talk about a larger design space, which we call uh, augmented displays. But first, we are uh, not the first to combine uh, augmented reality with displays, so let's have a quick look at um, some related work. There's different work uh, in the modeling and sketching division, where different forms of displays are often uh, used to manipulate AR or stereoscopic 3D objects, for example, DualCAD, uh, Symbiosis Sketch, and Mockup Builder, or uh, to enable freeform uh, sketching, like uh, sketch, uh, a Symbiosis Sketch. And there's also work on um, distributed user um, interfaces where displays are used to support interaction with AR or to provide additional views and information. This is just a short overview. For a more detailed overview, please look into our paper. And now we'll try to explain what uh, differentiates us from prior work by giving um, an overview of our core concepts. So our general idea is to take a tilted, multi-touch uh, and pen-enabled uh, design workstation and combine it with fat coupled stereoscopic augmented reality. And this creates an AR modeling environment, which addresses the lack of immersion um, of traditional displays. And at the same time, this allows us to use the precision of natural pen and touch interaction in contrast to, for example, mid-air interaction. So our goal was not to, to challenge well-established um, modeling applications, but to explore how we can use augmented reality to improve them. Uh, in contrast to the related work, we emphasize the alignment of the display and the AR content to generate the impression of a single seamless system instead of a distributed one. And furthermore, like I said, we also explore how additional space gained by using AR can be used, for example, to display additional views or menus. Um, of course, an interesting question is where do you place augmented reality objects? In this regard, we define three different levels of proximity of the AR content in relation to the display. The first one is superimposed objects directly in front or behind the display, which has also the strongest connection to the display itself. The next one are adjacent uh, objects uh, arranged at the edges or close to the edges of the display. Um, and the third one are objects uh, placed anywhere in the environment that share no spatial uh, relation to the display. They can have other relations. Um, and we propose to use uh, natural pen and touch interaction for the first two levels, but to use mid-air interaction um, for the third level to interact independently from the display. Um, yeah, we implemented our concepts in a prototype, of course, which you will see um, in the following slides. We use uh, Microsoft Surface Studio as the interactive surface and the Microsoft HoloLens as the head-mounted AR display. And both devices run Unity, which we also implemented our prototype in. Um, and to, uh, for communication and for synchronization of the two uh, applications, we implemented a dedicated client-server uh, structure with, which uses a custom protocol, which is based on open sound control and TCP. And also to um, synchronize the coordinate systems, uh, we place a root anchor for the AR content at the bottom left corner of the display. So if you have... Any further questions regarding our prototype, I will gladly answer them later on. But now I would like to get back to our uh, concepts by giving you a quick overview of our navigation and modeling techniques. Uh, we decided to use touch input for all navigation-related tasks uh, and to interact with menus. 
And we also wanted to write, provide users with a simple gesture set um, that uh, yeah, works well and it's easy to remember. And this is why we also used toggle buttons for mode switches, for example, for translation, rotation, and scale. Um, and basically, all interaction techniques use one finger uh, drag gestures for manipulating uh, the X and Y axis and a two finger uh, drag gesture for manipulating the Z axis. Um, we use a box modeling approach uh, for a designer, which means that you have a rough model that is inter uh, iteratively refined by uh, creating new edges and faces. And we decided, um, oh, that was a little fast. Uh, we decided to use pen interaction exclusively um, for adding new geometry for uh, the modeling functionality itself. For example, um, you can create a new edge um, simply by crossing two existing edges with the pen, and you can extrude a face by first selecting it and dragging it outward with the pen. Um, an interesting challenge in this regard is how you interact with AR content that is in front of the display. For example, users have to reach through the model um, to interact with the display, which leads to perception issues. And we solved this for design AR by switching to a 2D projection um, when users start the interaction, and then switch back to the stereoscopic AR uh, representation after the interaction is finished. Um, so this explains our core concepts, and I would now like to describe the specific techniques in more detail um, that illustrate how it, the AR space can be used to extend and improve the view on the display itself. Um, one important functionality is, of course, to create new models, for which we propose three approaches. Um, the first one uses uh, or is a 3D object, object browser, which uses AR to also show you a preview uh, of previous and future items, and also, which also enables you to see the objects already in stereoscopic AR. Uh, the next one uh, enables you to simply sketch the contour um, of an object, and then um, a rotational solid is created, again, as an AR object, which is a very easy way to create such an object. And the third one is uh, to use a real-world reference by simply sketching the contour of a physical model, uh, which is then converted to an extrusion object, and you can also um, manipulate the amount of the extrusion, like you see now. Um, yeah, another important concept um, are 2D autographic wireframe views, which are useful to reduce the complexity of a 3D model. And this is uh, a standard feature of nearly every uh, 3D application that, you, um, that there is. Um, but usually they require a lot of screen space. So our approach is placing them in AR space at the borders of the screen and to maximize the screen space that you have for modeling. Um, the position resembles the corresponding 2D projection, um, which makes it immediately obvious uh, which view they show. Um, the interaction is linked, so when you change uh, the model, when you move it, for example, the view is updated immediately, and also you can interact with the display border um, to manipulate uh, the autographic views, for example, to hide them or to change their... Um, to change the rendering mode. And you can also tilt them by doing a pinch gesture to have a better view. Um, yeah, we also propose to offload menus into AR space, um, again, to maximize the screen space used for modeling. You can, for example, do one finger swipe to the border of the screen to offload them to AR. You can do a swipe to the center of the screen to move them back to the display. And of course, you don't, oh, uh, I should show you these as well. And of course, uh, <laughs> you can interact with them when they are offloaded. Um, so this is why we uh, added little handles at the border of the screen that you can touch um, to, to toggle them, for example. But uh, you can also use the border of the screen to interact with more complex uh, widgets. Um, for example, imagine a two-day selection task um, where you first touch the border of the screen and then um, 
you can move your finger up and down to change uh, the rows, and you can move your finger further uh, to the left to change the item. Uh, and then when you lift the finger, you uh, trigger the selected item. It's a very simple, easy way to interact with menus that are offloaded. And the last concept I want to present um, makes use of the available AR space um, to embed instances of the modeled object uh, directly into the environment. They are um, spatially independent from the display, so they can be placed anywhere. And because they are impended, uh, independent, they are not um, transformed by touch, but using mid-air interaction and a dedicated transformation widget. But um, they are still coupled to the modeled object, which is on the display. So that means if you change the model, um, the, uh, the offloaded model uh, updates dynamically. And this is useful to gain an understanding of how the model relates to the real environment. For example, for 3D printing. So this concludes the design AR concepts itself, um, but we also opened up a much larger design space, which we call augmented display, and which is, which is not all limited to a 3D modeling um, class, which I would like to talk a little bit about. Um, we define augmented display as the extension of non-stereoscopic interactive surfaces, like tablets, tabletops, or display walls, with through uh, two or, or three-dimensional objects using personal augmented reality. Um, but what is important is that the display serves as a frame of reference for all associated augmentations. So besides our own work, um, there are other publication, publications which, given this definition, can be considered um, augmented displays. And we are very interested in exploring the switch design space um, of augmented displays, especially regarding questions like uh, what is the spatial relation between augmented reality content on the display? You already saw um, an example in the proximity levels I presented earlier, but this can be analyzed further. Um, what role do AR objects play in relation to the display? Are they, for example, the primary focus um, to the user, like the modeled object is in, in design AR, or do they play an auxiliary role um, to content that is on the display itself? How does the interaction uh, with the display manipulate AR objects? So what is the spatial coupling, for example? And how can we use the screen to define um, boundaries for AR objects? Um, for example, to clip them or change their behavior. So yeah, to summarize, um, I presented you our work design AR, an immersive 3D modeling application that combines head-mounted AR displays uh, with an interactive surface. And in the future, we plan to evaluate our concepts of using AR to extend this, the display screen in a formative user study, and also to pursue um, the exploration of this uh, design space of the exciting new class of displays that we call augmented displays. Um, yeah, thanks you for, uh, thank you for the attention, and I'm now open for questions. Thank you very much. There was one. <laughs> uh, thank you for the great talk. This is Andrea Bianchi from KAIST. Uh, I would like you to comment a little bit about uh, offloading some of the interfaces off screen, like, for example, the orthogonal projection, which I, th I think is a great idea. But given the limitation of the current technology, for example, the field of view of the HoloLenses, can actually people see them, or do you actually have to? Thank you. Well, not without moving your head, obviously, but having used it, I, I would say it works reasonably well right now. Of course, having a larger field of view would help tremendously, um, but we're looking more into the future. So the HoloLens 2 is, is, is nearly there, should be there already, uh, and which probably also have a lot of, uh, will have a larger field of view. Um, so we don't see that as a, as a limitation on the concept side, but of course there's a little limitation on, on the practical implementation here. Mm -hmm. But I think this will change with future technology.
Thank you, Fabrice Metulic, Preferred Networks. Uh, I really like this, uh, this work. So it seems that <clears throat> you're using the uh, AR space, as far as I understand, mostly for visualization and for very basic manipulations of, of the objects, right? So I'm wondering whether you're not kind of missing the whole 3D interaction space to uh, provide some creation, some design tools also in that 3D space, uh, because you have a fixed space, 2D surface where you actually use the pen uh, to, to create your shapes and, and your uh, modeling, right? So how would you extend that? Um, how would you use the pen in the 3D space, maybe using a tablet? You can just hold the tablet in the air, and then depending on the orientation, you can use the whole 3D space or something like the um, AR pen, which was presented at Kai uh, this year. So I don't know. Can, do you think you really need the fixed surface? Like designers, do designers prefer to have a fixed surface to do the, their creation, or do you think you can exploit the, uh, the 3D space also for creation and modeling? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I can't really answer you the question if designers prefer a fixed um, uh, station, at least I do when I do my modeling. Um, so this is the baseline. We have, of course, uh, to evaluate that in a, in a real study with real designers, which we didn't do now. Um, but the focus was more, and in this work at least, was, was to use a stationary display um, and to explore how we can expand that. Uh, using a tablet, um, to actually do modeling or sketching in, in uh, AR is, uh, is an interesting approach, but it's, I think it's a very different approach, with, which would, would require very different uh, techniques than, than what we have done here. Um, There's a tablet in VR paper. Uh, actually, uh, Dan and Hamant uh, presented that at Kai also this year, and, and yeah, they do I, some kind of very basic modeling. I, 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 I know. Uh, <laughs> I saw that paper. Yeah. Just as a, a short additional answer to, to your question, Fabrice, uh, um, since I'm one of the courses, it is actually the notion to, to, use a, to use a tablet and to move it in space and to use a, a spatial location orientation. Of course, uh, it's also represented in the augmented displays concept. So the idea is not, um, it's not fixed to a stationary display, but any display which can be augmented uh, and where you can interact with, where you have the precise interaction on the surface plus an aligned or uh, a coupled augmented view is this concept of augmented displays. So, so in a sense, yes, you can also use a tablet and maybe not, um, uh, we, we didn't envision VR, but uh, a normal environment plus augmented reality. So though it could be possible to use that as well as an addition. Thank you. So, um, Actually, more a couple comments than so much a question, but I'll phrase it that way. One is um, the concept actually will work well. Um, what you your left hand is awfully. So, so your you hard to the, understand. The, the first thing, my first comment is um, you don't use two hands, um, you, it, and we have two hands. So um, one thing you could be doing with the other hand is we've done some work. Uh, where you instrument the display and you put in a gimbal so you can actually rotate and manipulate the, the tablet as a means to control the rotation and viewing angle without having to move your head all over. So that's one thing you could explore. It would, I think it would augment the technique very well, and that's a good use of the hand. The, the, the use of the tablet is, is useful because it does anchor the thing in space, so you, you've got better, better memory. Uh, but the other part would be... Um, Again, I think it, there's some examples I think might be interesting for you to look at Tovey Grossman's uh, 3D tape drawing examples where he's on a flat surface been doing drawings but on layers so you can stack things up and then change the orientation. And, it, and he got some very complex curves that worked out really well in that. And so everything's best for something worse than something else. There's some really good technique. There's some very good applications where this would uh, extend really well with and those two techniques would be among many that would help that. Yeah. Keep going. Thanks. <laughs> I think that are good ideas. To thank, thank you. Uh, and thank you for presenting, Patrick. Yeah. Tell me thanks, Patrick, one more time.